Hello again. This is the second lecture in the Python for Biologists Absolute Beginner course. And in this lecture, I'm going to introduce you to different ways, or actually a good way of reading FASTA files and searching for coding sequences in a FASTA file. So there are three main methods to deploy here. The first one is using variable.read. The second one is to use read line. The third one is to use read lines in Python. So what I'm going to go through in this lecture is to use variable.read, which is a method that allows you to read the contents of a FASTA file or any string containing file. So let's get started. I saved the DNA sequence file in this repository here. So this is the file in this folder. And in order for you to get the path of this file, what you do is to click here and copy the path. This is quite simple. You copy it. So basically what you do is to click here and copy this highlighted region and then paste it in a variable. So let's say we have x variable, and this is equal to open. You can also use with open, but it is fine if you don't do it. You paste the path, then you write down the name of the file. So backslash, the name of the file is duty.fasta. It's important to write down fasta. Then you tell Python to read. This is the purpose, to read. R means to read. Whenever you open a file, it is critical for you to close it. So you close the file. Now, in between, you write down code. So a is equal to x.read, and that's what we need. This is the first thing that you do. You open the file, you read it, you close it. Now, run this code, hold Control and press Enter, or hold Shift and press Enter. Now, if it doesn't return error, it means that everything went smoothly. Now, once we read the file, you can print it out. Well, this gives you an output. Let's see the output. The first line until here is the first information line, which we don't need here. We have to remove it. So if you have a look at the file and try to count the first line, it is 103 characters, and we don't want that. We have to remove it. This is the first task that we do. Then you have return characters in every line. So this is called carriage return characters. And we've got to delete these as well. You don't do it manually. This is a programming language. We do it the easy way. So the first thing to do is to remove the first 103 characters. We create a variable, declare a variable, you say b is equal to a, and this is from 103 to, to the very end. Then you can now see what b looks like. So b looks like this, which has the first line removed from the FASTA file. Now we declare another variable called c. Well, I'm trying to do it incrementally so that you understand each step the easy way. C is equal to B dot replace. So we replace the return characters with empty strings. So this is the first argument. And you just write something like this, two quotations without any space in it. And now let's see what C contains. So C there is no return character left. Now we can use this variable and try to get some information out of it. If you have a look at the FASTA file from the NCBI database, you can see that there are information about the coding sequences. Now we are going to retrieve the first coding sequence. And the information for the first coding sequence is highlighted here. This is the first coding sequence. Now we would basically search for the beginning and the end of the DNA sequence containing the coding sequence. So basically, this is the beginning. Beginning equals to this one. And we want to capitalize this. So beginning capitalized is equal to the beginning 
sequence.upper. So the upper method here, what, what it does is, it makes every character here uppercase letters. We do the same for the ending, so we take this part, we say ending equals this one, and end capitalized equals the same thing, so dot upper. Now, once we run this, we actually get all of those capitalized. Now, those two are capitalized. So, let's see where these two are in our plain DNA sequence here. A good method here to use is find method. So, what you do is to write down c.find. Basically, we can write down E and B. BC means beginning of C equals C dot find the beginning. So this finds the index value of the beginning. You can also write down beginning index so that's easier for you to understand what's going on. Ending index equals C dot find the end capitalized. So we search for these two within the variable C. So what we do here is that we have a variable called C and it contains your DNA. So we search C for the beginning and the end to mark the beginning and the end of the DNA sequence. So what we have here is the beginning. We put the beginning here, the index, and the end there. In between, it is filled with the coding sequence, which is the first coding sequence. Now, we want to print out C, print C from the beginning index to the ending index. So this is how you reference it, basically. You can also say something here to tell the user that this is, is the first coding sequence. You can also have a return character to avoid mixing it and it tells you this is the first coding sequence from ATG to GTC. So let's see <coughs> why GTC. This is because GTC was the beginning, so it returns the beginning. Now we have one, two, three, four, five characters left. So in this case, what we do is to actually increment it by characters. So you write down endings equal ending index plus eight. DA, there you go. So eight characters after this one, GTC. Oh, it was actually this one, GTC. You have eight characters. Then you are returned with the proper coding sequence. So this is the coding sequence. This is how you are returned with the coding sequence. You can do it other ways. There are lots of different other ways to do so, but this is a basic way, a kind of a hard-coded, easy way of finding. Otherwise, you can basically try to retrieve XML file. So here you have XML file, and from the XML file, you have you can easily take out every piece of information, like the coding sequence. You just write down the coding sequence, and it returns this for you in one instance. But this is important for you to understand how the FASTA file works and how to retrieve DNA sequences and parts of DNA sequences from FASTA file. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and thank you for joining me.